All right, welcome back. It's been six months since an impeachment inquiry into President Biden was launched by House Republicans. This morning, the investigation is stalled. There are not enough votes to successfully impeach the president. But Republicans fear ending their inquiry would essentially clear Biden of any wrongdoing. And that's a political message they don't want to send heading into the November election. CNN's Annie Greer joins me now. Annie, good morning. Just that set of sentences. Uh, well, they don't want to end this investigation because they don't want to act like they're clearing him. But on the other hand, they don't seem to have enough to actually show that he's done something wrong enough that's worthy of impeachment. Like, oh, my gosh, what is going on? I mean, it's a great question. <laughs> I think when Republicans took the majority and got their committees in January 2023, investigating the president and his family was a top priority for them. But 15 months or so in, they've received over 100,000 documents. They've interviewed over 40 people, including Hunter and the president's brother, their business associates, D Department of Justice officials, IRS whistleblowers, and they don't have evidence of wrongdoing. And so the question is, how do you land this plane when the expectation was you were going to be able to deliver some, some evidence of wrongdoing and then impeachment articles against the president? And so one conversation is about criminal referrals. House Oversight Chair James Comer, who's co-leading this investigation, very much wants that. He's on television talking about it. I've talked to him about it many times. But the two other stakeholders in this decision-making process, the Speaker, Mike Johnson, and Judiciary Chair Jim Jordan, are less committal when it comes to criminal referrals. And they say there's still more conversations need to be had. Beyond that, uh, Comer says he wants to do legislative reforms to address so-called influence peddling. But, you know, Casey, this is just not where... Republicans thought they were going to be this far into their investigation. Well, I mean, Annie, you've covered like every single step of this all the way along the way. And there were high profile missteps at a series of points. I mean, their first hearing, mm -hmm. um, then this issue with the key witness who was arrested uh, for, you know, lying, basically. Um, I mean, in terms of a criminal referral, I mean, what leg is there to stand on? I mean, that's unclear. And they don't say who these criminal referrals would be for. And remember, Hunter Biden was so key to their investigation. All of the allegations around the president was built around him. And Hunter came in for his deposition on February 28th. He sat for six hours. He answered every requ question Republicans had for him about his business deals, phone calls, his surface level interactions that his father had with his business associates. And some Republicans even say, you know, Hunter answered our questions. He was well prepared. There is no more to really get out of him. There's what is no the point? There. What is the point of doing a public hearing? But Comer is trying to bring Hunter in for a public hearing. Hunter has refused to do that. They're, he's, they're still trying to go after Hunter, though. They just quietly subpoenaed uh, AT, him for his bank records at AT&T. So they're going to try and keep finding new avenues, but nothing has turned up. And the, the broad politics, I mean, I should note, you did gen this reporting did generate a very lengthy uh, letter uh, from the White House uh, saying that, that they write today to, to, it's clear the House Republican impeachment is over. This was sent uh, to Speaker Mike Johnson. Mm -hmm. The politics of this, I mean, they, they basically can't, they don't have the votes for it. They don't have the votes, but the politics and the 2024 election looms large over all of this. Some Republicans I talked to say, we know we don't have the votes, we don't have the evidence. Let's focus on things we can deliver to Republican voters and getting Republicans and Donald Trump elected in 2024. Essentially, let's move on. Then you have another camp of Republicans saying, let's drag this out as long as possible. There's no incentive to end this. We can continue to just, you know, find little lanes here and there and just continue to try and hurt President Joe Biden politically. So those are the kind of two camps that are mm -hmm. actively discussing this right now, and they haven't come to a consensus about what their timeline is. I mean, I think it's just worth noting that, um, you know, uh, the, the <laughs> whatever uh, artifice used to be around these things that said we're doing this for the good of the country and not for, like, raw politics, it's, it's gone, right? I mean, that used to be something that was required here, and it just no longer exists. Annie Greyer, it's great reporting. Thank you very Thank much. You. This morning, we're waking up to reports in both Politico and Axios of what you can call a Dear Mike letter from the White House counsel Ed Siskel to House Speaker Mike Johnson on the impeachment efforts, what they call the floundering impeachment efforts against President Biden. The letter reads, Stuart, Dear Mr. Speaker, I write you today because it is clear the House Republican impeachment is over. Members of the House majority believe the inquiry is, quote, falling apart. It is obviously time to move on, Mr. Speaker. 
Um, what does this tell you, Stuart, about the shifting politics of the impeachment if the White House is making political hay out of it now? Yeah, look, I mean, Mike Johnson, they're basically sending a letter to Mike Johnson. You know, you may think that we're still going out, but we're not. Um, this whole effort has been tawdry, pathetic, uh, stupid, counterproductive to the purposes of anybody in the United States that wants to try to have a better life because they actually elected these people to govern. Um, you, you know, I, I, there is world-changing, history-changing stuff, like passing the bill to support Ukraine, that this Congress should be addressing. And it's extraordinary that they're sitting around like a bunch of stone kids at the end of a dorm room on a Saturday night, the guys who can't get a date trying to figure out ways that they can get revenge. Um, the Republican Party is not a governing party. That's what and they're going to show it over and over in different ways. But we have to quit being surprised when they do. Thank you for using a relatable metaphor there, Stuart. Joe. Um what about what about the impeachment effort here? Can Democrats use this for political gain now? Uh, look, I think the Republicans can't get out of their own way on this stuff. I mean, even the her uh, hearing that they they just brought, uh, I think, exposed more differences in her Trump. Uh, and and made his case, you know, the difference in his case, a guy who who didn't, uh, you know, actually wanted to keep the documents, never turned them over, fought it every inch of the way, uh, had his employees move uh, the documents to hide them. All those things are so much different. And so here they bring this, you know, bring in uh, the special counsel uh, in, in an attempt uh, to re resurrect again uh, the, the, the fact that all Americans know, geez, Joe Biden is an old guy. So they're doing that, again, as Stewart says, while there's real things that right. need to happen here, that they're not doing, like Ukraine, like funding that. Uh, so I, 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 again, that whole hearing, I think hurt Trump uh, and his cause and the cause of, and by the way, hurt a bunch of Republican members of the House who are, happen to be running again in districts Joe Biden won. Um, so they keep walking these guys down the plank uh, and they're all going to pay for it in November. It's just it's just stupid. It's we're now into this literally the stupidest period of politics that I've seen in my entire career. That's a pretty high bar right there. I've seen a lot of stupid periods, but I understand what you're saying. Stuart, yeah. very quickly, by it the is. end of today, Judge Scott McAfee in Georgia will rule on whether Fonnie Willis, the Fulton County District Attorney, could stay on that case. We don't know how he is going to rule, but if he is removed. She is removed. How much of a political gain is it for Donald Trump? A political gain? Um, look, I, I think that what happens today is not going to matter as much as what happens when there will be a trial. Um, you know, uh, it, it could be a good news cycle for Donald Trump, but it's not going to make the fact that he called up the Secretary of State of Georgia on a recorded line and told him to rig an election. None of that's going to go away. So, I think we have to keep the big picture here. Look, the Republican Party is led by a guy who is out on bail, literally, who was convicted of sexual assault that a judge classified as rape. I mean, that we don't talk about this as sort of the headline in every election story is just amazing. And every donor to the Republican Party mm -hmm. should know you're giving to a guy who's out on bail. Are you good with that? And I just find it extraordinary that the party can fall into this sinkhole. He was found liable in a civil case uh, of sexual assault, but I get your point there. Stuart Stevenson, Joe Trippi, thank you both so much for being with us.